Good afternoon, and welcome to the 2020 graduation ceremony for the Bandung Alliance Intercultural School. Because of the times we are in, we are live streaming uh, this event today. We have a photographer who will be taking many, many pictures that will be distributed to the families after the ceremony. Secondly, everybody involved in this ceremony has used a lot of hand sanitizer and everybody has done that in coming in. So you will see a lot of handshaking, a lot of high-fiving and whatnot. And we have all practiced the proper hygiene in that area. We are going to start with our ceremonies now. So please join me in welcoming the class of 2020. I would like to extend a special acknowledgement to each of the following groups. First, the Bandung Alliance Intercultural School is blessed with an incredible teaching and support staff. They are to be highly commended for their, their investment into the lives of our students, specifically in each of these seniors before you today. Thank you for your expertise, your professionalism, and your love for students. It is a privilege to be serving our Lord with them at our school. Second, I'd like to thank the members of the Director's Advisory Council of Bandung Alliance Intercultural School. We are so grateful for the countless hours and energy that you committed towards serving our school. Ms. Sanghee Park, Ibu Lingling, and Mr. Jonathan Gunthorpe, thank you for your service. Third, I would like to thank all the family, friends, alumni, by students, and others who are joining us today. <clears throat> Parents, you are to be highly commended for your investment that you have made to bring your child to this milestone event in their lives. On behalf of the entire staff of BICE, thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to work with your child. Thank you for joining us in this wonderful celebration today. Well done. I would like to identify some long-term families that have partnered with BICE for many years. Students who are graduating today have spent 10 or more years as students here. Those students are young men. Young men started in uh, January of second grade. Rio has been with us since pre-K-3, so this is 15 years that he's been at the school. Caitlin has been here uh, for more than 10 years as well, and her brother, Devlin, graduated in 2018. 
Sung Ha has been here for over 10 years, and her brother, Sung Chun, graduated in 2018 as well. And finally, Jordan has been a student at Vice, started in uh, preschool, and has had uh, brothers, Jason and Justin, who graduated in 2010 and 2016 as well. So we would just like to thank those families and their long, long-term commitment uh, to Vice. Thank you so much for your loyalty and support for more than a decade. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Jason Whitehurst to the podium for the invocation. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, uh, in this year that has been anything but ordinary, we gather today to celebrate the lives and accomplishments of these amazing students of the class of 2020. And right now we invoke or invite your presence to be a part of every aspect of this ceremony tonight. We thank you for leading these students in their learning in their years here at BICE and from keeping them, for keeping them safe as they have studied and for watching over them as they have completed this season of their academic journey. We pray that the graduates and all their family and friends and educators that are watching online today may feel proud and enjoy honoring the achievements of this great class. May today be a memory that burns bright within them as they embark on life's great adventure. In your name we pray, amen. Welcome to the 2020 graduation ceremony for the seniors of this school. I thank all of you, parents, guests, seniors, students, relatives, and friends for being a part of this special graduation service. We are so proud of these students. I know you are too. And I want you to, to just um, understand students that in the midst of very unique circumstances, the very short message I want to share with you today um, is very, very important. So short and sweet, let's say. Um, a great man once said, you can't measure a man by the things that he attains alone. Greatness is measured, rather, by what it takes to be an overcomer. In other words, much of your life is going to be about overcoming difficulty. For some of you, the fact that your graduation ceremony norm was canceled it seems like a devastating thing at the moment. As a matter of fact, we don't even know uh, if college classes will take place in the fall. There are so many uncertainties. There's so many challenges. There's so many things right now that look so very, very big. Let me share with you just a brief illustration. When I graduated from high school, my first piece of jewelry that I ever owned was my high school ring. I mean, when I got that ring, it was, it was made out of gold. It had the Wildcats on there, the mascot for my school. I was so proud of that ring. It represented 13 years of schooling. It represented a lot of work, and it was so very, very important to me. Four years later, I graduated from college. I got my class ring from college. And those things, as you know, tend to be quite large. And so um, I tried to put it on different fingers, but the finger that it fit was the ring finger um, that I had my high school ring on. So Reluctantly, I pulled off my high school ring and put on my college ring. The other day, I was digging through a box of old things that, that I have kept through the years, looking for my high school ring. And uh, in fact, I could not find it. I don't know what happened to it. But the day of my graduation, that ring just meant so much to me. But when I graduated from college, 
that ring took a different level of significance. And now that college ring, boy, that was the thing. Now I had gone through four years of college testing and difficulty and challenges and struggle and homework and studying all night, some nights anyway. And um, that college ring took on importance that was previously held by that high school ring. Then I got married, got, got into uh, my vocation, uh, started uh, working overseas, and my college ring was replaced by a wedding band, which I still wear today. Um, this is a very, very important symbol to me. I couldn't find my college ring either. And I just thought, you know, there was a time in my life when something seemed so very, very important that in the greater view of life, when you look back, it changes significance. And what I want to say to you is, while well, right now, um, what our world is going through may seem larger than life, there will come a time when we will look back and we will have memories of how we handle this situation. You will share those memories with your friends and with your children someday. Remember coronavirus uh, when it's in the past, and we all look forward to that time. But I just want to say that life is really like that, isn't it? The sooner and the earlier in life that you can grasp that, the better off that you're going to be. Because life is not so much about uh, getting rich. It's not so much about getting a big house. It's not so much about being seen by your peers as successful. Life is really about being an overcomer. And so I want to challenge you today to be an overcomer. You know what? There, even though in, in that whole theme of being an overcomer, there, there's ways to do that right, too, and there's ways not to do that right. If I were to give you a pop quiz today and ask each one of you, who, what is the name of the Pharaoh that built the largest pyramid? Um, very likely, most of us, I will, I will include myself, most of us would not be able to say the name immediately of someone that built the, the biggest pyramid. The truth is, no matter what you accomplish in life, if you do it for self-significance rather than for true, deep purpose and investing your life in others, you will end up with a big pyramid that people look at the pyramid, they don't look at you. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons that we can learn in life. Not, not only should we be overcomers, but we should be overcomers with a pure purpose. Many of you have the ability to make significant impact on the world someday. Some of you are making it on your world right now. I want to encourage you that if you make that impact, if you are that overcomer, that if you don't do it for the right motive and for the right reason, you will end up with a pyramid that no one knows who built. Yes, you will leave a legacy, and that legacy will be more recognized than you. But there are some things that we can invest in that have eternal impact. That's why most teachers go into education. Um, because this is one area where we can impact the lives of young people like you, who will in turn impact the lives of others. Uh, I want to challenge you to not only be an overcomer, but be a person of significance. That in all the things that you conquer, all the things that you obtain, all of your successes will have a purpose that has value that is greater than you. Impacting the lives of others. Uh, living your life in such a way that God is pleased with the way that you live. Not just so that your name rises to someone who is recognized. Because that recognition will fail. That recognition will fall away. And so I want to encourage each one of you to, to live your life in such a way that others are impacted for good. And if you do that, then your life will truly be a blessed one. Not only will you be successful, but you will be successful in a significant way. 
So as the president of this network of schools, I want to encourage you to, yes, be the best student that you can possibly be. Yes, celebrate this time of graduation. The word commencement actually means a new start. Even though we often use this time to celebrate the things that you have attained up until this point, uh, this is really a time of a new start. And I want you to major in the right thing, live your life the right way, have a truly meaningful spirit of overcoming difficulty even now, and also to make your life a life truly of significance before God and before others. God bless you. I pray that God will use you mightily. Thank you very much. At this time, I would like to present the recipient of this year's Outstanding Senior Scholarship. Every year, the staff of BICE is deeply blessed by the students. The experiences and memories generated by the time spent with you are priceless. This scholarship, funded by your past and present teaching and office staff, is an outpouring of our love. Through it, we want to demonstrate and recognize and honor one BICE senior each year who has demonstrated a servant's heart, character, and leadership potential. The following was written by Miss Elizabeth Lamertha. When we think of a leader, we often have one of two images. The person who leads from the front, who shouts charge, and whose noble inspiration causes others to rush to the cause. Or the person who leads from behind, whose gentle but persistent prodding shepherds people in the direction they should go. But this year's recipient of the Outstanding Senior Scholarship leads a third way. She leads from within, from the middle. She's always there in the middle of things, participating, but actually doing more than just participating. She envisions organizes, encourages, and inspires. She sees the best in those around her, believes in their potential, and works with them so they succeed. She quietly says, hey, what if we did this? And you find yourself saying or watching others say, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it. And it happens. Whatever the assignment or project or meeting or production, she gets everyone involved and it happens, and it happens well. Anyone involved behind the scenes in this year's production of Cinderella, or this year's Senior Chapel, or a myriad of other activities can attest to her passionate, inspiring, kind leadership from the middle. So it is with great honor that the BICE staff would like to award the outstanding Senior Scholarship to Miss Emily Nielsen. Congratulations, Emily. Eagle Living recipients, please stand. Eagle Living recipients are students who provide service to their community and to the BICE community outside normal school hours. The heart behind this program is to develop a lifestyle of service in the students at BICE to mobilize them to see beyond the walls of the school and to seek to become part of a larger community around them. Mark chapter 10 verse 45 says, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. Today these students can be recognized by the silver cords they are wearing. Advanced placement, international diploma candidates, please stand. The APID is a globally recognized award for students interested in pursuing university outside of their native country. It requires students to display mastery on a minimum of five AP exams across several disciplines and represents an exceptional level of achievement. These students can be recognized by the green cord that they are wearing. Honor graduates, 
Please stand. Students who achieve a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or higher are recognized today as honor graduates. It is my pleasure to recognize the hard work and commitment that these students have put into their studies to achieve this honor. These students can be recognized by the gold cord they are wearing. Congratulations, honors graduates. National Honor Society members, please stand. NHS recognizes students who have demonstrated excellence in the areas of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. BICE students are considered for NHS if they have a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or higher. Students must then complete an application process. Applications are reviewed by a faculty council to determine who will be invited to join. Their leadership skills, character, and service in the school and surrounding community is considered. These students represent our elite students in these four areas and be, can be recognized by the white stoles they are wearing today. Will the distinguished diploma students please stand? During their high school course registration, students are given the opportunity to take classes beyond the minimum requirements for graduation. Students who complete courses of study that include additional courses in math, science, social studies, and foreign language earn the distinguished diploma. They graduated earning at least 28.5 credits. These students are recognized by the red cords they are wearing today. You may all be seated. Each year, BICE recognizes the seniors with the two highest cumulative grade point averages for their graduating class. The salutatorian award is given to the student who achieves the second highest cumulative GPA. Following recognition, we will give him a sash, medal, and certificate, followed by a short address. It is my honor and privilege to recognize the recipient of this award, Trevor Rio Primandaro. In all my years of attending graduation ceremonies, I've always fallen asleep just in time to miss out on everyone's speeches and woken up just in time for the cheesecake. <laughs> Sadly, this year, that tradition comes to an end. However, naps and cheesecake are sacrifices I'm willing to make to remind us all of much greater sacrifices. With that said, on behalf of the class of 2020, I would like to take this moment to thank everyone. First, thank you to the Indonesian staff here at BICE who have, who have looked out for me. To the gardener who in kindergarten would pick fresh berries for me to eat to the Sapums, who were so, so kind as to invite me to their local soccer tournaments, just to humble me on the pitch. <laughs> to Ibu Sri, whose sense of humor is better than mine, and who always brightens up my day with her smile. Thank you. To all of you for your acts of kindness.
Thank you to my teachers who have stuck with me even when I proved to be most disappointing. To my elementary teachers who had to grade my tests on division and reading comprehension. To my secondary teachers who got one of the more annoying students. I want to let you guys know that your sacrifices didn't go unnoticed. And the work you're doing here is substantial. I'm talking about the eternal future. Thank you to my coaches who believe that my athletic abilities extend greater than what my height might say about me. To Coach Thomas, Walker, Julian, and Andy, who all showed me what it meant to be a leader. Thank you for the example you set out for me and the rest of the team. To my underclassmen, who have put up with my obnoxious behavior and random comments. To the class of 2023, who have helped me set up last minute for chapel. To the boys who got bucket hats with me so I wouldn't feel so lonely. To the middle schoolers, who are the funniest people and are the reason I take AP statistics in the seventh grade Bible classroom. <laughs> you guys are all super cool, and I love you guys so much. Thank you to my... Thank you to my brother. Who's my... Thank you to my brother, who's my best friend, who accompanies me in all my little adventures, whose competitive spirit keeps me going, whose kindness and humility I look up to. Thank you for who you are and for all the love that you've shown me. Makasi aya. yang ngebelain Rio waktu dimarahin sama mama yang suka ketawa sendiri kau nonton Sule di TV yang tidak pernah berhenti belajar dan yang selalu setia kepada panggilannya makasih ayah you'll always be my role model Makasih mama Yang paling cerewet <laughs> Yang selalu buka pintu kamar Rio Untuk bilang sesuatu Terus pintunya nggak pernah ditutup lagi <laughs> Yang selalu berjuang untuk anak-anaknya Dan yang pantang menyerah Meskipun masa lalunya susah Yang mengajar Rio artinya mengasihi, meskipun pernah disakiti sama anaknya sendiri. Makasih, Mama. This award is dedicated for you and to you. So nothing will be able to express the immense gratitude I have for the sacrifices you have made for me. Last but certainly not least, all thanks be to God who has remained faithful 
even now, as I stand in all my imperfections. The one who I've hurt the most has given beauty to the struggle of life in the form of hope made possible through the greatest sacrifice humanity will ever bear witness to. To him be the glory. Now, to the class of 2020, I'm so proud of each and every one of you for the, for the milestone you have reached today. And I'm so incredibly excited for what is in store for you in the next chapter. However, there is no guarantee that everything will be smooth sailing. You'll have your moments of bliss and happiness, but, you'll also, but you will also face the loneliest, toughest, most trying times of your lives. And that's why I believe it's so important to remind ourselves and to appreciate the people in this community. When we're going through difficult times, we can look back and be reminded that our parents, our siblings, our teachers and our classmates and underclassmen are in full support of us. Class of 2020, today may be our day, but let's not forget the people who have given so much for us. Remember that these people love us and care for us and will pick us back up in our lowliest of times. Remember the sacrifices that your teachers and your parents made and know that they will put so much more on the line because they love you. Lastly, rem remember the most important sacrifice that was made for you, that Jesus made for you. I want to leave you, class of 2020, with a verse that may fill you with hope, that you'll realize that there's someone out there who loves you more than I do, and that's saying something. So I want to leave you with Romans 5.12. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you. Thank you, Rio. Great job. The valedictorian award is given to the student who achieves the highest cumulative GPA for the graduating class. Following recognition, we will give her a sash, medal, and certificate, followed by a short address. It is my honor to recognize the recipient of this award, Emily Nielsen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Mr. Nielsen, Mr. Thomas, Ms. Hall, Mr. Whitehurst, classmates, and to all those viewing from a distance. Thank you for being here today with our class. The word valedictorian is derived from a Latin phrase meaning to say goodbye. It is my honor and privilege to say goodbye in this public way to and on behalf of the cl vice class of 2020. Traditionally, this speech is supposed to be a time of looking forward together towards the future and imagining all the great things we expect we will accomplish as adults. But this time of looking forward, as with most other aspects of life right now, looks a bit different because of COVID-19. 11 weeks ago, so much changed and we were reminded that for real, the future is uncertain. Three months ago, if I had written this speech, it would have sounded very different because our plans would have been a lot firmer. We would have been looking forward to so many things during fourth quarter. ISAC, senior banquet, senior trip to Bali, graduation at Mason Pine with all of our friends and family, just to name the big things. Those were the kind of memories we thought we were going to make. We took those things for granted at the beginning of the year. 
But here we are now at our teeny tiny graduation ceremony without even our immediate families here to watch, and we don't even know if our universities will open up in the fall. Proverbs 16.9 says, The mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. It is inevitable that we will make plans and put hope into our future, but it is not wrong to do so. But in fact, it is God who directs our steps and not us. This has been and always will be true, but periods of uncertainty like this give us real opportunities to practice this truth. So how do we live our lives with that in mind? How do we look forward with joy and not fear when we don't even know what next week will look like? What can we look forward to that is certain? What do we have control over as we look forward? I think there is a pretty simple answer to that question. We can be certain that in life, challenges and disappointments will come. We will get to control how much or how little we learn and grow as we walk through them. James 1, 2-3 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Will we look forward to these times as opportunities to grow, change, and draw closer to God? Will we allow ourselves to grow in steadfastness as a result of this trial? Looking into the uncertainty of the future, I hope we can all approach them with confidence and be able to apply the lessons we've learned in high school to the quote-unquote real world. There is value in every mistake and trial we go through because it is an opportunity to learn. The hashtag Corona Silver Linings is slightly cliche, but it is actually an acknowledgement of still being able to see God's goodness even when times are not what we thought they'd be. Is the fact that what I expected to happen didn't happen a sign that God doesn't love me anymore or isn't sensitive? sensitive to my feelings, or when I'm grumpy and unhappy, is that, a sign, is that a sign of my own sinfulness? That is not to say we shouldn't grieve over what we have lost, but the fact that God is still in control and desires to conform us more to his image is what should be able to give us the strength to move on. One of my favorite things about quarantine was being able to interview all of you for Senior Chapel. It gave me the opportunity to deepen my relationship with you all and learn what goes on in your minds. That is just one example of a multitude of things that God has blessed me with during this time. We have grown a lot here at BICE. Think about how far we've come since middle school. Think of all the people and experiences that have shaped us to be who we are. God has blessed us abundantly. In times of uncertainty, there are still things we can be certain of. God is in control, he will bless us, and we will learn if we choose to. The question is, will we take what we've learned in life and apply it to our futures? Don't let the lessons we've learned at BICE, and not just the academic ones, go to waste. We have such hope for our futures if we hold tight to these truths. Times will be uncertain and confusing as we transition into adult life, but go in knowing that you are prepared. Life will never be smooth. God does not promise that, but he does promise us joy when we obey him. Having all of our plans upended during this last quarter of high school has reminded us of the uncertainty of the future, but that doesn't mean we need to be scared of it. Corona has given us an opportunity to practice finding God and finding joy in the midst of uncertainty, and I encourage you all to face your future with the same truths we are clinging to now. I know that the energy, smiles, and dedication that have filled our classrooms these past years will go on to fill college campuses, future homes, and workplaces. If you hold on to the truth that God is in control, he will bless you, and you will learn for all of your life. Finally, I want to thank the entire BICE community. Overwhelmingly, you have set wonderful examples for us living lives of trust in Christ. We say goodbye as a class to you today, feeling blessed and grateful for your impact on our lives. Thank you. I would now like to invite Youngmin Kwan to come up and introduce our keynote speaker. Hello, everyone. A few days ago, I was asked to introduce our keynote speaker. Knowing who she was, I gladly took the honor of introducing her today. Throughout the years, many teachers have come and gone in this community. However, this teacher, our mentor, our friend, she has stayed a part of this community for as long as I can remember. We are blessed to be able to witness her talents in photography, her ability to design yearbooks, pamphlets, posters, banners, and so much more. She is irreplaceable to our community. You see her smile throughout the hallways every day, and she remembers the names of every single student, whether you have been here for 10 years or only a month. It doesn't matter to her. To her, every student is to be loved and cared for, for no matter how long they've been here. That is how much she loves us. That is what I love most about her. 
Her ability to help students feel special, recognized, careful, cared for, and most of all, loved. Sometimes she may not put things in the nicest way for you, but you learn to listen, you learn to grow, and you learn to mature through our teaching and mentorship. I'm sure every senior here can agree that she has helped us grow in some way or another throughout the years. I hope she keeps this heart of service and love that shines amongst many and helps this community become a better place. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Ms. Hall. Wow, young men, that was, that was humbling. Thank you, your words are kind. Before we begin, I need to tell you that this public speaking, not on my list of favorite things to do. Who knew that a required speech class in high school and then again in university would pay off so well? Oh, probably my teachers and advisors. Guys, there's your first nugget of wisdom for today. Your advisors, your teachers, they're gonna ask you to do things that are hard. Maybe you think it's a terrible idea. It'll pay off later. Trust them. I wanna take a moment and talk to our audience. If this was a normal graduation, I would imagine we would all be together at Mason Pine, all under one roof, celebrating these students. If we were all together, I would ask you, parents, to stand. I would ask siblings of the seniors, and I would ask the grandparents and family members to also stand. I would like to ask their teachers, both young and old, not the teachers being old, elementary and high school, to please stand. I would like to ask their coaches, both academically, athletically, on the drama stage, to also stand. I would like to ask their club leaders and advisors to stand. I would like to ask their mentors to stand. And last of all, friends. I would imagine as we were standing around, awkwardly looking at each other all standing, we would probably be giving thumbs up, pats on the back, high fives. I would like to thank you for your investment in these students. You have helped shape them and created the young men and women that they are today. Because you encouraged them, you cheered for them, you corrected them, you prayed with them, and you prayed for them. So thank you. Thank you for your investment in them. Seniors, I wanna to talk to you guys now. I wanna take this moment, this very monumental moment, this is one of many milestones that will come in your life to tell you some important things. Remember to stretch. Okay, I saw it, you guys giggled, thank you. You guys are like, wait, Ms. Hall, you just said it was important and now you're telling us to stretch. Yes, just like each morning when you wake up and you stretch to wake up the body and wake up the mind and you invigorate yourself, you probably stretched right before your 1 a.m. AP exam this year. Yeah, you probably did. It invigorates the body. That's not the type of stretching I'm talking about. Let me remind you for a minute of a class meeting last year up in Ms. D's room. We were planning out the senior banquet for the class of 2019. And before we broke up into our smaller committees to work on projects, I asked you guys, hey, we need some MCs. Two of you gentlemen, like, were on it. You were passionate. It was like you had lived your entire life for this moment. And I knew you guys would do great, and you did. You guys bring excitement and passion. I also knew that that stage needed some calm and some grace. Ladies, would one of you want to volunteer to be MC? Eyes just looked away. <laughs> Anyone? Right over here, I hear, I literally hear the self-conversation that one of you had with yourself. I know that this will make me better. I know that this is something I can do. I don't want to. And then in a louder voice, Ms. Hall, I can do that if you really need me to. That's the type of stretching I'm talking about. Let me tell you another story about stretching that I witnessed this year. 
Elementary Olympics. Games imagined and created, organized and led by student council. For an entire week, for the elementary students. Guys, the students loved it. The parents loved it. Teachers talked about it for weeks. We might have also talked about how exhausted you were that week and kind of secretly loved that too. But you know what we loved even more? We loved how rewarding that was for you. Guys, thank you for taking the time to stretch out of your comfort zones, for trying something new, for investing in this place. It's those investments that have made this more than a building, this more than a school. It's made it a community. It's made it a place that I want to be. Just so you guys know, some of my favorite yearbook photos came out of that week. Nice job. So those are the type of moments that I witnessed as you stretched that make me stand here today stretching outside of my comfort zone. Because of that required speech class, the stretching will prepare us for what comes next in life. Now, the next thing I want to tell you I know is so cliche, and I'm really, really sorry. I can't think of a better way to say it. So here it goes. Stop, take a deep breath, maybe two. Look around, see the world around you. I mean, really see it and enjoy the small things. That's the cliche part, the small things. You guys know that I have deemed it that where I come from is the most beautiful place in the world. But just so you guys know, I am choosing to live in another beautiful place. When you guys come up the hill to come to school and you see the green hills with that patchwork quilt of farmland and you see all those shades of green and the blue sky, guys, those are small things. Enjoy them. At night when you see the sunset and the colors come out, enjoy that. You know my favorite part about the sky? is when the sun starts to set and that gold lining wraps around the clouds. Goodness, that's gorgeous. Enjoy those moments. Here's some of the other beautiful moments that I have witnessed. And it's not just in creation. A second grader beating the drums with all he had and then continuing to live life that way. Your generosity as a class for the Christmas angel tree. Hand-drawn paper rabbits that magically began appearing in my classroom and then multiplying last year. A Christmas door decoration with origami boxes for each one of us. It was you popping into my classroom after your senior exit interview just to say hi. It was the puns that you come up with in class, and then when you laugh louder than anyone else. I love that. It's the way that each one of you, in your own way, love us. Thank you. Guys, those are some of the moments that I will always treasure when I think of the class of 2020. Here's the most important thing I have to say to you. The most important thing that I feel like I've learned in life, love others. Let me read through one of my favorite all-time passages. It comes from Romans 12, 9 through 21. You guys, it's in the message, I know. But here's the deal. The message speaks to my heart. It resonates with my soul, and I understand it. So here it starts. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflamed. Be alert servants of the master. Cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. 
pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, wait, I know you guys have it in you. Get along with everyone. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Our scripture tells us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch. If he's thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. To the class of 2020, I can't sum it up better than that. So let me say it again. Get the best of evil by doing good. I can honestly say that I have seen that within you guys in the last eight weeks. Congratulations. You guys are amazing. Thank you for allowing me to be your sponsor. Thank you for the investment that you have made in me. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Ms. Hall. Recognizing the fact that these individuals comprising the class of 2020 have successfully completed all the requirements for graduation as outlined by the Bandung Alliance Intercultural School and accepted by the Association of Christian Schools International and the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, we, the high school faculty, and administration are re recommending the following students for graduation. At this time, Mr. Nielsen and I will present the graduates with their diplomas. Annalyn Clarencia Nugraha. Jason Sastra. Nicholas Ardi Muliawan. Emily Ann Nielsen. <laughs> Youngman Kwan. Jordan Dion Tenendar. Simone Michelle Liebich.
Trevor Rio, Widi Tama, Primandaru. Kyla, Victoria. Isabella, Caitlin, Cartela Harja. Edward, Xavier, Gunarian. Sungha, Lee. Beltra, Chong. Chloe, Theophilia, Tenoe. Emily, Florence, Ju, Yurianto. Angelia, Tanu. Graduates, please stand for a prayer of dedication. Please pray with me. Dear God, may these graduates be the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. May they mourn, yet be comforted. May they be meek and inherit the earth. May they hunger and thirst for righteousness, and be filled by you. May they be merciful and therefore shown mercy. May they be pure in heart, be peacemakers in a mean world, and when persecuted because of righteousness, may they inherit the kingdom of heaven. God help these graduates when they are insulted and persecuted and falsely accused because of their faith in you, and to be reminded that great is their reward in heaven. Help them to know there is nothing new under the sun that you have not seen and remind them that you were persecuted and you empathize with them. May this, the graduating class of 2020, be the salt of the earth. May they plant seeds that spring eternal. Heavenly Father, be their ever-present help as the light of the world. May they share with courage and let their light shine in ways to glorify your Father in heaven. I pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure
to present to you again the 2020 graduates of Bandung Alliance Intercultural School. Graduates, you may now turn your tassels. I'm told that we had a, a few technical difficulties with the actual turning of the tassels. So they are working on that and we are going to just redo that last event uh, so that you're able to see the turning of the tassels. Graduates, <laughs> you may now turn your tassels. Thank you for joining BICE in our celebration of and thankfulness for this amazing class of 2020. We wish them a full measure of the Lord's blessing in all things to come. Thank you. <laughs>